Okay, guys, this is the second production day for Access the Creators Club. We are here with Kai Lin. Um, just so happens that they want to be doing construction outside of my apartment, so that's going to be a little bit annoying to deal with, but Perfect we're going to get through it. It's all good. Today's guest, Kai Lin, is a pro dancer, instructor, and choreographer, who's here to talk about his experience in the industry, the importance of ethics, and knowing why you create your art. Hey guys, welcome back to the Creators Club where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. I'm sitting here today with dancer, choreographer, and instructor, Kai Lin. We have a lot to talk about. i um, going to try to keep it all cohesive because I have a lot of things that I want to ask him and hopefully we don't get too lengthy, but um, I'll put you a little bit on the spot to start, okay? Sure. Why not? Um, Why not? Cool. Uh, so when I hit you up and I was like, yo, do you want to come sit down uh, for the Creators Club? You were asking me all these questions. I was in the middle of something, so it was hard for me to respond to you, but uh, I think the first thing you asked me was like, oh, is it going to be um, mm. kind of like in the style of what you just did, what I've been doing pretty much the past yeah. seven months? Um, and the answer was no. And I just kind of want to provide some clarity for you and just anybody else that might have been following Creators Club and might wonder why in the new mm. year we're not doing that anymore. Um, and the reason is because you ever look at a magazine, read a magazine or read a book, and sometimes you find that you kind of went through the magazine and you, and you only looked at the pictures? Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. what I feel like was happening with Creators Club. I felt like people were people were tuning in to see the branding and the pictures, but they weren't really paying attention mm -hmm. to what the people I was interviewing really had to say. Like reading the Right. Weren't really reading dialogue. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just even like clients that I've gotten after I started doing Creators Club seven months ago were hitting me up for branding and for photo shoots and not for Mm. The, the, what I really am trying to say with yeah. this and trying to do with this, which is the business consulting and the nah, creating yeah, value. And the, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I pretty much decided that I was going to stop doing that because I mm -hmm. want people to really focus on the conversation that we're having and not the pretty pictures. Yeah, yeah. First of all, speaking of people that pay attention, thank you for supporting the Creators Club. I feel like Always. you are Always. one of the many people that actually are, is or are, is paying attention to yeah. what we're saying. I mean... You yeah. know what I mean? So can't help it. I kind of sorry, I put you on the spot again, but I kind of just want to hear from no you. Worries. What is the perception of, of what you're taking in um, about the Creators Club? Like, what's your what's your opinion on it? Hmm. Well, it's just really simple. I mean, number one is that nobody else is doing this, so that automatically has my attention. And number two is like you're you're asking us questions that give people answers. Mm -hmm to other questions that everybody else has, but no, everyone's scared to ask those questions. Right. And then you're also asking dancers that are still living that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, for me, it's more about being relatable. And you're putting that at the forefront for everyone to have answers. And I just, I respect that so much. Thank you. Know, you know, and I know you care too. So like, mm -hmm. the fact that you care enough to improve the industry or improve, um, like, our lives or, or just the way we live our lives mm -hmm. as artists yeah. like you know I just appreciate it so much so that's Thank why you. I try to like support as much as I can yeah. I mean yeah it's just I feel like our life it just just has to be about be about supporting the things that we believe in mm -hmm. or we feel like make the world better right. so not just like artists but just the world period. the world in general mm -hmm. yeah so just for anyone yeah. that might just be kind of finding out what the creators club is the reason I created this I created creators club honestly it took me about like six months to develop um, I started it Sweet. over last summer. I started developing it. It didn't really, what do you call it? It didn't launch until October yeah. of last year, so a little over a year ago. And basically, the reason why I created it is because throughout my career as a dancer, I never could accept that this is just what it was, that I was supposed mm -hmm. to just go to dance classes, wait for somebody to notice me, hopefully I get an agent one day. Even then, I didn't really feel like agents were really doing their 100% to make sure that they're connecting me with jobs and opportunities. And I felt like there was just this waiting game of like, all right, what's supposed to happen now? And, I, yeah. and before you know, moving to New York City, when I was a kid, I used to want to be in music videos and want to dance. And at that time, the pop industry, pop culture was so inspiring. You had Missy, mm -hmm. Aaliyah, even Britney. Like, there was just so many ideas. And I would see kids and be like, how the hell do I do that? And I had my perception of what I thought the industry was. But when I got into it, I was like, so this is it? Yeah. Like, you're telling me that the most I can make in a day, even if I've been doing this for 20 years for a rehearsal, is, tw is 250 Like, that's the rate. And no matter how long I've been doing it, mm -hmm. who I'm dancing for. And I always felt like, no, I want to make just as much money as the artist I'm dancing for. There's no reason why they're getting a $300 million, a $3 million check and I'm getting 
seven fifty yeah. to to be on a project that's promoting your music that you're making money off of. Yeah. That just never set, set uh, sat right with me. Yeah. I mean, so you, still. So yeah. Say, right. 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 So does. just long story short. I create the Creators Club to be a, a business resource and a branding resource for three stages of your career. People that don't know how to get into the industry and want to figure that out. People that are currently in the industry and just don't really know what to do next all the time. And then three, people that have done what they wanted to do and have accomplished what they wanted to accomplish, You know, whether you're a photographer, a dancer, a model, whatever, and want to figure out kind of how to grow beyond that and evolve as a brand beyond that. Okay, so... Again, and the reason why I, I am confident about what I, what I teach here, and I hate using the word teach, but that's just the best word yeah. to use right now, is because I've done those things. I've got into the industry. I've been in it. Now, again, people will, people will have their opinion on, well, you didn't go on a major tour or you didn't work for Janet Jackson. doesn't matter. I did it. Yeah. I've booked jobs. Mm-hmm. I've did it. You know what yeah. I mean? That's what it is. There's obviously different yeah. magnitudes and different levels of yeah, it doesn't which matter you can the scale do it, of it. But I did it yeah. and I got out of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Successfully. Yeah. On my own will. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I moved on from being a dancer yeah. because I chose to. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that's why I'm really confident about what it is. I keep... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I'm really confident about what it is that I'm saying here. So yeah, for sure. Um so yeah, so that being said, um I always knew since I was young, I'm gonna be a dancer. That I'm gonna be a work, and I'm gonna have a, my own business, mm-hmm. and that's just kind of the blueprint that I stuck to, and that's what I did. And I felt like yeah. when I came into the industry, I wish that there were certain things that I knew, and I wish that there were answers, and I wish that there were, you know, just certain things that I felt like if I knew that, that would have saved me three years of my life, or if I knew this, that would have cut out six months that I wasted doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I just want to provide a place, like you said earlier, people can ask questions that people aren't asking, where they can get real answers and real resources on how to move forward every day as an artist yeah. and creative professional. For sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess transitioning to that, my question for you is, what do you think is the most challenging thing about being an artist in today's industry? I mean, there's a lot of challenges, but I would say number one is just accepting the no. Okay. You got to accept no so many times. And, I mean, usually my answers would probably take a couple minutes or like a minute to like think of an answer. Mm-hmm. And it's just that this is just really apparent. Everybody knows that the biggest thing for artists is just always accepting the no mm-hmm. and learning how to like take that no and, and fight for more yeses. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, and especially when, you know, our, like our country is not really like putting arts on the forefront, even yeah. though it we've had investments and we had like people putting in money for artists like music mm-hmm. and, and big artists it's still not like a focus you know what mm-hmm. I mean like so the, the money behind that is not a lot right like compared to like corporate jobs or things that feed other interests but in terms of the arts like you just have to accept that like whatever you're doing you gotta fight you gotta do more mm-hmm. than the average Joe for like right. a 9 to 5 you gotta do more especially if you're um, your own business like if you're an entrepreneur you gotta do more yeah. You know what I mean? It's not just like in rehearsal. Right. So um, it's, yeah, it's about accepting that no and learning how to like move on from it and not trying to stay. Um, I mean, we're going to have our feelings and we're going to be upset right, that right. we didn't. Because, you know, everyone has different goals. Mm-hmm. So if you end up having this huge job and you put all your eggs in one basket and you, and you want that job and you get a no, like you're, you're allowed to feel sad. You're allowed to feel disappointed. But it's what you do with it, do with that yeah. that matters. Because if you just stay there, then... You're either not going to get better, you're not going to get paid, you're not going to get another job. You have to stay. You got to keep keep going on the path. So accepting the no is the first thing. Okay. I think. There's yeah. two things I want to touch on there. So first, yeah. absolutely right. You got to learn how to accept that no. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing that I kind of live by that kind of guided me throughout my career is I've learned that like we're going to get knocked down. Yeah. What matters is how long you stay down. Yeah. Life, you see what I'm saying? Life period. period. Not even art, arts. And yeah. um, something not I forgot arts. to mention in my little intro there was that another reason I launched this situation, this platform, is because I also found that a lot of people just love to make excuses as to why they can't do things. Yes. My circumstances, my this, mm-hmm. my that. Well, you know, and yep. I don't believe in that. I've come from shitty circumstances. I've come mm-hmm. from a family that couldn't be like, here, go move to New York. Here's all this money. Yep. Even getting through school, I had to really fight to figure out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, I always just feel like if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Now again, everyone's journey is going to be different. Everyone's story is different. Everyone's circumstance is different. Yeah. Totally. But I just believe that it's it starts with the possibility, believing that yeah. you can make those dreams come true, staying consistent to what you're pursuing, 
and just not making excuses for it. So yeah. absolutely, you're going to get no, but it's like, you know, when one door closes, a lot more open. It's cliche, yeah. but it's very, very true. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like just when you go to a job interview, right? Yeah. You're not going to get every job and offer for every job you interview for. You got to keep trying yeah. and keep doing it and da da da. But I think the important part about learning from a no is being able to take a look at yourself and evaluate, okay, what could I have done better? Yeah. What are the people that did get the yeses doing that I'm not? Mm -hmm. What can I learn from those yeah. people? You it's see what I'm saying? Possibility yeah. Instead of like what and I've met people that don't know how to do that. Yeah. They don't know how to self-evaluate. They don't know how to do research and say, okay, I didn't get that, that job I just for twice. Two years yeah. in a row, I didn't get it. Okay, why mm -hmm. not? There's different things. Again, it could be talent. Mm -hmm. It could be look. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that... <laughs> That thing is just trying to fight it, and stay up. It could be talent. It could mm -hmm. be look. And I think accepting that it's okay when something is not for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like a lot of people try to force something to be for them. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if it's not. What worked for me is there's a lot of things that worked, that worked against me, right? Mm -hmm. Being I look very, very young. I'm very, very short. Those are two things in this industry where it's like you start getting boxed a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even like when it came to like my dance training, I didn't move to New York until... I was 20. I couldn't really focus on my training until about like 23. Mm -hmm. Got an agent at 24. You know what I mean? So I was a little, I didn't really, I didn't really get a lot of time to practice as a freestyler or a street dancer. So there mm -hmm. were a lot of things that like, people have preferences. Yeah. And there were a lot of things where I'm like, that's not me. Yeah. I'm not good at that. And yeah. you have to be able to decide, okay, do I want to spend time being better at this or this yeah. or this yeah. or this? And you have to be able to self-evaluate and figure out what works for you. Yes. So that was one thing that I did where I was like, you know what? Here, here's my pros, here's my cons. Yeah. Given these pros, what parts of the industry work for me? Yeah. What are my choices? What are my choices? Yeah. Focus on that. Versus mm -hmm. trying to be what I wasn't and trying to fit in places where yeah. it just would never happen. Yeah. And wait. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. that's a tip. Transitioning real quick, let's talk about the commercial industry. So, I'm going to give you what my opinion. This is how I see you. Okay? And I want you to correct me because I want to really know more. So when I, all the years that I've seen you, first of all, you're by far one of the most talented movers I've ever seen. Like Thank I've experienced you, so you create and I think it's Appreciate like you. amazing. Thank However, you. I feel like I don't know. Um, I want to know. I won't say I don't know. I want to know what is your actual career focus? So you teach. I know that you teach. Um, you obviously dance. But I feel like you, your focus is more in instructing and teaching than it is about being a backup dancer. Mm -hmm. So, can you talk just a little bit about that? For sure. So, you know, I I just learned to not really put my focus in more than one I used to. Mm -hmm. And I just started to accept the fact that things changed. You know, like in our industry before, you used to have to dance before you before you taught. Not dance, but dance behind the artist. Okay. And, and before you taught or, or have that credit. Mm -hmm. And now that we have so, like all these different... Um, it's like a different millennia almost you know what I mean like yeah. we have social media we have um, all these outlets where we can actually teach in, in like small communities where it doesn't have to be professional so we're not crossing any lines right. like we can do more than one you know what I mean we have the resources to do more than one and I just accepted that I wanted to do all of it and I just am open to it you know what I mean it's, it's more about accepting like kind of like being open to opportunity but at the same time, I'm still trying to have a focus. So okay. I'm balancing those two things. Um, I go off of what, like how I feel. Yeah. Like just to be honest, like I go off of how I feel. Okay. And, and still try not to step over any lines. Like I right. try not to, you know, um, like for instance, I would never try to like choreograph on a job that someone else is already choreographing. Like mm -hmm. I just, you know, there still has to be some kind of ethic okay. in, in the way I run things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of a goal, like backup dancing is great. I just feel like the more I can back up dance, the more experience I get. Right. But why not work, feed both? Right. Why not? Like, I can feed both. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I just think of it as, like, each thing that I have is like a kid. Like, yeah. it's my child. There like, dance is my child. Mm -hmm. Choreography is my child. Um, teaching is my child. And the more I feed one, they work with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's the beauty of the generation we're in. If you're really paying attention and you're really taking in the information and not letting your ego take over, mm -hmm. what you're doing is really building something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the more you're relatable to the dancer, you understand what to do choreography-wise. And yeah. you're living the life right now. It yeah, wasn't absolutely. 20 years ago. I'm living it right now. Right. And the more I dance, I understand what the choreographer wants. Mm -hmm. 
teaching wise too. I know what I want as a student. Like, like you know what I mean? When I yeah. when I'm te- when I'm taking a class, I'm like, oh, why is the teacher doing this? I want this. I want that information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why aren't they drilling it like that? Why are they on their phones? You know what I mean? Like things like that. Like, and when I'm when I'm a teacher, I think about those experiences and I reflect. Yeah, it's all about seeing you and other people. Yes, but still making sure that you're. It's not just you. Because right. everything you do, art is, in my opinion, it's for the world. Yeah. It's for the community. So it is a little bit of self, and 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 I love that I'm living a life that I'm, that I'm happy about. But I believe that if you live a life that's self-centered, you're not. You you just you won't be truly happy. Like I feel like humans in general, yeah. not to get too deep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But humans in general, our our goal is to help each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like if you, it, I feel like when it comes to success, my success is only when I'm really helping somebody else right so when i'm playing these three roles and i go back back and forth it's to keep myself humble and relatable to yeah. each thing now in terms of the career right dancing i do back up here and there i do guest performing i personally like guest performing because it's more special i mean come on yeah, who doesn't like yeah, to feel absolutely. more special like, it's just you <laughs> yeah and you get paid your rate and you work on like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's, it's great i got to guest perform for Tallahassee ballet uh tokido company um what else have I done? Like, for like all these teams in Jersey, you know what I mean? I, it just it feels great. Mm-hmm. And then in terms of choreography, I do a little more assisting. I assist certain uh, certain choreographers on little things here and there. Um, but most of my focus is like teaching and just dancing and just training, just yeah. juggling those three. And choreography, I'm just not really rushing that. Like, because yeah. I can always create. You know, my, my mind is just, I, I love to create. So it's, it's normal for me. And I feel like I need to do this before my body kind of like, you know, yeah. gives in a little bit. Yeah, but, I love that. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's all there. good. It's all I good. love a few things you just touched on. You talked about how you are kind of the most happy when you're able to give back in some way. Yeah. And then just also mm-hmm. the fact that you feel like, I love all these things. I'm going to do them all. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I'm, I'm pointing that out is because I want to make a note to just say that like you don't have to be the most successful person in the world. You don't have to have all this money in the world to uh, create an initiative to give back. Yeah, you, you know don't. what I mean. You can start anywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I truly believe in living a life of service. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like I've sure. done. It's not about me anymore. It's bigger than me. Yeah. But um, the reason why I wanted to point that out is because there are people out there that are in this industry that they have this habit of waiting mm-hmm. and this idea of like. Nope, I can't be a teacher until I was a dancer. And then mm-hmm. I can't be a choreographer until I was a teacher. And then I can't. It's like they're waiting on these. Like who 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 created these limitations? Who yeah. said that you don't have something to teach? Mm-hmm. Now again, it's up to you to know whether you do have something to teach and whether yeah. you don't. It's a balance, right? Yeah. It's a balance. Mm-hmm. But my point is, you don't have to wait to to, to act on the things that you're passionate about because yeah. at the end of the day, you're getting practice as you as you do it. Yes, yeah, you got to start much. somewhere. Yeah. That's how you're gonna know if you even like doing it. One, that's how exactly. you're gonna know two whether you're even good at doing it. You gotta start. Then from there, you're gonna get better at it. You're gonna let some things go. You're gonna yeah. figure out how to make them all work together and merge them. So, but the point yeah. is, just don't wait. Do everything yeah. that you're passionate about and just figure out that balance of how to juggle them. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of um, earlier, you mentioned how you know back then you had to have been a dancer that's danced behind somebody in order to move on to the teaching route or choreography route. Yeah. Today, we have social media platforms mm-hmm. that have kind of, in a way, created some shortcuts around these things. Now, yeah. you know, again, even back then, you, in order to be even in the dance industry, you had to move to a major city like New York or LA to even be connected to this. Now, yeah. it's as easy as uploading yourself and you've exposed yourself to the world. So, people have their opinions on whether or not social media is good or bad when it comes to our industry in specific, uh, comes to our industry specifically. But I want to know what's your opinion on it. Do you think the social media age is great for our industry or what, do you think it's bad? Or a little bit of both? Both. I feel yeah. like it's like anything in our world. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like it's... I mean, you, you got to think about it. it the, the negative thing that comes with social media is already in our nature as humans. Mm-hmm. It's just magnified times 10. So I, what I don't understand is why... I see the pers- I see the perspective. I under- I try to see both sides, mm-hmm. but at the same time, social media has done allowed so much opportunity for us people that don't have that, mm-hmm. you know, or or people like me and you who grew up without social media, right? And then when we became adults, we have social media, right? Like I wouldn't be able to. I, I just 
I see so much potential. Yeah. Like anybody that is a dreamer or sees big, big things for themselves and for other people around them, it's just really hard not to see how big and how how much of how much of use social media can be. Right. Because if you think about it, I just look at like Airbnb and Uber and stuff like that. Like they don't even own they don't own the places, but somehow they can sell and and rent out homes. Right. Same with Uber. And on top of that, like, yeah, I mean, I can just get around anywhere just off of my app. You know, I can I can make I can reach to people without using like MySpace or or, or you know actual connections. Right. Now, is there negatives with social media? Tons, but there's a lot more positives and there's a lot of more a, a lot of more opportunity. Yeah. And I feel like in our day and age, as as you know, we we keep multiplying as people. Yeah. So the more opportunities, the better. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that whatever excuse people try to use to make it make it seem like it's a bad thing. It's, it's really them trying to project who they are yeah. and what they feel like, how, how they see it, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and the things that they want to do with it. You know, of course, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to like try to X out or, or kind of like put a put a cap on some of the uh, bad stuff with social media, like, mm-hmm. like, you know, bad publicity and like, you know, kids being like stars at a young age and not, and not being, um, not living regular lives. But at right. the same time, there's, how can that how can that be an excuse when there's tons of kids that are superstars on social media yeah. but still live regular lives? Yeah. And that's because their parents or whatever, like whatever is behind them supporting them. Yeah. It's not social media, it's really the core of the person or the core of the family. Agreed. And then multiply times ten. Social media is just multiplying that. Agreed. Same as the person. Same as a person that's either self obsessed or trying to be about themselves. And then they're like, Oh, social media made them that way. Actually, it's just because that's who they were, truly. Right. And then social media just magnified. I agree. So that's why I don't really think that it's it's bad. It's it's just a tool. It's yeah. another tool. Yeah. It's, otherwise, TV would be the same thing. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> music would be the same thing. Music. There's people that make good music, talk about good stuff. There's people that make music and talk about bad stuff. Yeah. Or or things that isn't that aren't really helpful to our world. You know what I mean? So I just feel like it's another tool. That's just yeah. my opinion. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm very traditional when it comes to my work ethic. Like I Same. love being out in the real world. I love meeting people in real life. I love showing that like I could put in the work for real. However, I don't see anything wrong with uh, social media. Mm-hmm. However, I do want to point out that like in the beginning when social media first came around, especially in the dance industry, when people were just posting any and everything in class, messing up, doing da da da, I was like, guys, like, do you realize that you're putting like flaws out there like why the hell would you do that but yeah. i get it it's great to kind of show progress and to kind of show you as you get better at whatever it is that you're working on yes um but there's just one thing that i want to point out is that once i grasp the idea of the fact that like the internet is the one place that connects you to everyone in the world everybody the one place so when you really realize like between youtube and instagram facebook twitter it's literally a free platform a free resource to introduce yourself to everybody in the world. Mm-hmm. Why would you not take advantage of that? So yeah. that's when I really, it, it clicked yep. in my head and I was like, why would I not take advantage of that? There are people out there making thousands to millions of dollars being a YouTuber or yeah. through Instagram. Making spinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and putting themselves out there, not being afraid to put themselves out there and use these resources. So it's like, I just want to point out that if you are someone out there, if you, yeah, if you are someone out there that has a negative view towards social media, um, just do some more research and just realize what I said, how big of a deal that is. This is the one place that can expose you to everybody in the world. You never know. If you're talented, if you're good at what you do, somebody will pay attention to you. You know what I mean? And also, mm-hmm. um, just to add on to that before we move on, don't ever be afraid to put your own ideas out there. Sometimes it's not always about somebody recognizing you, yeah. and somebody giving you an opportunity. Sometimes you got to have the guts and the balls to create your own. Yep. Situations, your own production, and put your own ideas out there. Let's talk about so you think you can dance. Was it Ukraine it that Ukraine. you did? Yep. How how did that come about? Well, so Tokyo, I worked closely with Tokyo, and he was a judge, and so you think. Okay. Right? Now, some people may think that he brought me on, mm-hmm. as in I didn't have to do anything, and it was actually the exact opposite. He just threw me in, and. Um, they had an international season, okay. and they were like, do you have anyone that is willing to compete? And he didn't let me through anything. He had everybody else decide if I was good enough or if I was right for the show. And each time, I had to pay for my flight to go. Oh, wow. Each time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, for anyone that thinks that mm -hmm. he gave me that, you're actually really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I had to work really hard just to get that. It wasn't paid. It was just for, it was for my exposure. It was for me to reach out to another country. I want to take my dance, my personal experience with dance around the world. You know what I mean? And that was my first step is going to Ukraine and experiencing something new, a new culture. And just like, you know, trying to make, um, make a journey for myself. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. leverage, let's talk about leverage. So usually awesome. when people, um, you know, as an average viewer, when I'm watching TV and I see shows like So You Think or America's Next Top Model, all these uh, competition-based reality shows, sometimes you have this idea that people that are on them, especially if they get far, they come off and all of a sudden they have all these opportunities handed to them and they're big in the industry. What was your experience like transitioning out of the show? Mm -hmm. um, if any, what are, some thing, what are some ways you leveraged that exposure um, into what you're currently pursuing in your career and then on top of that I'll repeat them if you needed to. Yeah. What is the goal right now? What is it that Kai wants to do with his brand and with his career? So hard. <laughs> so I'll go back. I guess the first part is um yeah, so what what was what was it like transitioning off of the show? Transitioning off the show was very a lot easier than I thought. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I was in and out of LA. So the moment I finished the show the first thing I did was just go right back into training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm always training no matter what. And then just finding the flow back into LA, like teaching, reconnecting with my students, reaching out again, um, auditioning, mm -hmm. putting myself out there more as a dancer. Because I had more, I was auditioning, but I wasn't going as hard as I thought I was. Okay. So it gave me more fuel and more passion to kind of like, you know, put myself out there dance wise. Because... Okay. I mean, I'm always dancing. It's not that I'm not dancing. I just wasn't doing industry stuff. I wasn't trying to like, like hop in front of every single choreographer for every single audition. I just felt like, you know, it was not pointless, but I just wasn't feeling it. Right. You know, yeah, I go off and I'm, you. Yeah, I'm going off of the feeling, the feel of, of how I feel at the moment. Okay. You know what I mean? So, or in that season, okay. at least for those like three or four months. But when I came back, it was a lot easier than I thought. I just jumped right back into auditioning and did job after job, kept teaching mm -hmm. and just... Overall, trying to learn from all my experiences. Yeah. Now, with Ukraine, it definitely increased my following because mm -hmm. I have like some fans in Ukraine being on the show and making it to like top six. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I just like my my number one goal was to eventually go out there and teach. Okay. So just travel and and keep that consistency, keep that network, and have them you know follow me. So really. It was just to grab their attention and make sure that, you know, this is me at the show and now watch me grow and I'm going to come back and impress you even more. Okay. You know I mean? And do you feel like, um, cause my next question was going to be, were there any expectations going in? Like things that you wanted to get out of it, which you just kind of addressed. So mm -hmm. do you feel like now that you're off the show that you've made any progress towards that as a result um, of being on the show? Yes and no. I think I try to go into things with, no expectation, okay. which is a lot harder than people think. Mm -hmm. Just not for my disappointment, but just because I want to let experience it first. I want to experience it and let that guide me instead of like have a predestined kind of a fate in my head. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Like, you know, because I don't want to disappoint myself. I don't want to take myself out of it. I just want to be able to accept it and then decide at the moment what I want. Because okay. you never know until you get there, your mind's just going to change. Right. But it's good to plan. I think it's good to plan, but I just try to find a balance between the two. Everything's a balance for me. Um, and then coming out coming out of that, my I think I had a small ex expectation to stay and teach for a little bit, mm -hmm. but I think I had more of a hunger to go back to LA and do my thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was, uh, I think because I've been there so much, the, the process is way longer than the regular, so you think, in America. Oh, okay. It's, kind of like all year long. So I was going back every two or three months and it was just like killing my energy a little bit. So I had to like refuel in LA and do my thing and maybe go back. Maybe I'll go back next year. But, you know, I just got caught up with work out here and okay. and really trying to connect with everybody in the States. Nice. Yeah. I think I just uh, try to make that too big. I was trying to like teach it internationally, which I do sometimes, but it's mostly in the country. So I think I wanted to get a feel of that first before leaving the country. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, from knowing you for a couple of years and just kind of seeing what you do from afar, 
um, and just also being a creative professional myself, like it's a lot of things to balance, especially when mm-hmm. when you're uh, juggling a lot of different uh, avenues of it, and not just focused on one one career yeah. uh, path. It gets hectic. Um, so I guess my my next question for you is, um, as an artist, it's very easy for a no or a situation to make you be like, you know what, forget mm-hmm. this. I'm gonna go do something else. I'm gonna go get a job. What is it that that drives you? What keeps you going? What makes you what What is it that when you wake up in the morning you're like, you know what, I'm doing this because of this? What's your like? What's your why? I think the overall general idea is just to be grateful, grateful. Okay. And a lot of the times, especially in our generation, we aren't grateful. We don't understand that we have food, water, and a roof over our head, and we have a chance to have more. Mm-hmm. And we always look for an excuse to to not go for more. Mm-hmm. Because we want to be fancy and we want to have nice cars and we want to impress people. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just enjoy where you're at, it's like for me finding a balance of like, okay, I can do more. I want to do better for myself. Mm-hmm. But that's not what's going to make me happy. I'm happy with what I have now. Okay. But then I'm hungry. So it's like happy and hungry together. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's what keeps me going is understanding that there's a possibility to get better. But then that's also not the determination of whether I'm happy or not. Okay. Because if it doesn't work out, like, again, we always have the no's. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to be upset, which is normal as well. But I'm, I'm saying, like, depressed, depressed. Like, mm-hmm. down, down, and you don't want to do anything. Yeah. I've felt that before. Mm-hmm. And and really, it's what happens is I just, I, I kind of set myself in a way that, you know, I start to put my happiness in things and accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Whereas I can't let it be a balance. Like, I should, you should always... Of course, you should always try to accomplish more right. and, and go for more. Yeah. But I think it's balancing that and trying to still be happy where you're at. Because when you're happy and when you're grateful for what you have, you're aware of those kind of things. You know right. what I mean? You don't let those kind of things steer you. You have a moral compass. And um, I think the next thing, my final thing to say about that is th- there's always a chance. There's always a chance. So it's like playing the lotto. Yeah. It's like playing absolutely. the lotto. You can play the lotto, right? And somebody can be like, why are you doing that? That's, that's so stupid. Like, you're, you're wasting your money. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, cool. But if I, what if I don't play the lotto? Do you think I'll win? No. And I was like, okay, but if I play the lotto, I'll have that 1%. And if I do win, and if I do win, what happens? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's weird. Like, it's like if I don't take that chance, mm-hmm. like, I can try again again. I can try again the next day. Right. But if I, for sure, like, don't even try at all. Right. Like, I mean... You, you, your chances are zero anyway. Yeah. So you might as well go. Right. Why not? You Absolutely. can wake up the next day and try again. That's Absolutely. that's what keeps me up. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people are crippled by that fear or what people think of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I have times where, like, I think, oh, man, someone's, so-and-so is thinking that I shouldn't be doing this. And, like, after a while, you should be like, who cares? Right. Because it's not... Like, your de- if your decisions are based on other people's thinking, then you might as well not make any decisions at no, all. No, absolutely. The way you dress, the way you eat. So if you let that affect your career, why not do the same with your career? Right. You know what I mean? Of mm-hmm. course, there's still ethics and, and, and being relatable to people and not being selfish. Right. But there's still a way to go for what you want and not let people, like, steer you wrong. And, right. And, and try to, like, put you down. Because it's very easy, especially in a competitive industry where everybody's trying it. Yeah. They won't even realize that they're doing it. Yeah. So that's why you have to build that. You have to be that everlasting battery of gratefulness. Absolutely. Because when you are, everybody else feels like they have to be grateful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, for for example, I could have all I could have a comfortable home and a car mm-hmm. and work, and I and I I could be still sad that I don't have a better job. Whereas right. somebody who's right. still living on someone else's couch, driving around auditioning, they're they like, love I love doing I day. love this. And sometimes that's what it takes for you to be. Oh wow! Like I'm. I love where I'm at. Right. But at the same time, I'm still going to go for more. But now I'm at a better place. I can like make a decision yeah. and, and be be clear. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I think it's, it's really being grateful and understanding that there's always, if there's a possibility, I'm going to fight for it. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to let life and all those complicated things like bring me down. Because if I, if, if I do, I'm staying down there anyway. No, absolutely. You, you just have to get up. That's that's what it is. That's life. Yeah. Corporate world or in the arts. Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta fight. You gotta fight for what you got. Yeah, and Period. I can I can identi- identify with that pretty highly because yeah. I think that um, around the time when I first moved into New York and I did start having all these different ideas about things that I wanted to do, 
I did have those moments where I'm like, wait, I'm not ready yet. What are people gonna think? Yeah, which is da-da-da-da. normal. It's human. It's yeah. yeah. I'm not and asking now, anyone to feel like right. invincible. Right. Yeah. But now that's the mindset that I've adapted, where it's like, yeah. I just gotta do what I want to do, and I gotta do what makes me happy. You know what I mean? And you know, yeah. like this past year, moving to LA and kind of figuring out more and more about what I really, really loved and what I wanted to create and put out into the world, I had a pretty good year. And although people can look at it and they think, oh, I'm definitely not a person that uh, associates money or yeah. success with being happy. I believe in doing what you love is what's going to truly make you happy. And, mm-hmm. and like you mentioned earlier today, living a life of service and really serving makes me others. Happy. Yeah. But like you said, I go for more every year because I can. Yeah. And because I know that it's possible. You know what I mean? So I definitely really, really want to encourage everybody. To, if you take nothing away from today, like take that away. Yeah. Like it's not about wanting the reward or thinking that money's going to make you happy, but go for more because you can. And we, yeah. we, we're very grateful that we live in, 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 a, in a country. And even if you're watching this from not in the U.S., we're, we're, we're very grateful that we live in a world where there are resources to allow us to get more than yes. what, our, what our parents had and what their parents had and what their parents' parents had. You know yeah. what I mean? So totally being grateful. Okay, everyone. So that concludes another episode of the Creators Club. Kai, it's been a pleasure. Um, sure. I'm going to get some more information from Kai as far as some tips to anyone that's looking to break into the dance industry. And I'll put a link to that in the bio below. If you enjoyed what we talked about today, make sure you like and subscribe. Leave some, com- uh, leave some comments. Feedback is the only way that we're going to know what to talk about next. So again, thank you for stopping through. You're welcome. And um, we'll see you next week.